I wonder if I'll ever get a good microphone. Oh well. So if you're a Monster Hunter fan, then you've likely run this idea through your head, this question. What if you were able to direct a Monster Hunter title? What if you had the choice of what the monster roster would be? What if you could design the next new weapon type? Would you bring back underwater combat? Would you bring back hunter arts or the wire bug or even the clutch claw? Believe it or not, there actually are fans of the clutch claw out there, surprisingly. Truth is, fan games aren't generally permitted by the IP holders, in this case it would be Capcom, as they take attention away from the games that they're making and thus drive down the sales, hypothetically. And we still haven't actually seen anyone make a full-blown Monster Hunter ROM hack out of one of the older titles. I've actually suggested to members of the Monster Hunter community before, you know, the insane idea, it's like, what if you ported monsters from Monster Hunter Portable 2nd G to Portable 3rd? Just an idea and they'd always tell me it'd be impossible, and I just don't think anyone's actually tried hard enough. And I think that's the reason why we don't have many actual Monster Hunter fan games. As I mentioned before, I was more predominantly in the online community of the Pikmin franchise, and over the last 10 years, that community faced a drought without any new games. To make up for this, they banded together and experimented with the ROM of Pikmin 2, the game, and after years of experimenting, they are now capable of using the, the game engine and, and coding to construct their own fan games, complete with original stories and original assets. They even turned the game into a first-person shooter. The amount of stuff that they did with this game was fantastic. Monster Hunter has never had a drought like that, uh, where we got no games, and thus the community has never sought out the construction of a brand new fan game from the ground up. Thankfully, mods have helped fill in the gaps for players who want more out of the game. Look no further than the Monster Hunter World Resurgence team, how they brought White Fatalis and Crimson Fatalis to World, and they even promise even more monsters on the way. Monster Hunter World may continue to get more updates and content through the form of mods, and this is incredible. You know, maybe like the Pikmin community, with all the knowledge of experimentation with the game, Perhaps in 10 years you might get, you know, a Monster Hunter World ROM hack, all with original content from the ground up. Or Capcom might just shut everything down and prevent us from doing any mods ever. Who knows? Regardless, the technical limitations of actually making a game have not stopped the creative minds at the Monster Hunter fan and wiki. Here, extremely dedicated Monster Hunter fans have written their own concepts for a hypothetical Monster Hunter game. In other words, they are just as obsessed with overthinking this franchise as I am. So I fit in pretty well. Now to clarify once again, none of the games mentioned on this wiki are real. They are hypothetical. They are simply answering the question, what would you do if you could design the next Monster Hunter game? Now there are a lot of fan games. You got Monster Hunter Zodiac, Monster Hunter Prime, Monster Hunter Origins, Monster Hunter A New Age, Monster Hunter Apex, Beyond, Ascension, Sea, Dawnstar, Dark Era, Enigma, Expanse, Expedition, Fable, Fury, Glory, Horizon, Legacy, New Dawn, Maelstrom, Odyssey, Pioneer, Outcast, Revelation, Verge, Dominion, Farblaze, Fate. The list kind of just keeps going on. There's a lot. And a few of them stand out more than others. My personal favorite game concept on this site is Monster Hunter Northward by user Quizel? Quizel? I don't know how to say your name. The premise is basically the same as most of the portable titles or the older titles. You're just a hunter for a village, that's it. The setting is Northward, as the name implies, so thus many of the monsters and areas have a cold climate aesthetic. And it's mostly filled with original monsters created by the user Quizzle. Uh, and they all have these really unique stylized icons. They feel real, tangible. Like, if you said this was the next Monster Hunter game, I would believe you. The quest list looks a little bit unfinished, so unfortunately it's a little difficult for me to see the actual flow of the game. But I can picture it as something like Monster Hunter Try, just you know, with snow and ice instead of beaches and sunshine. On the flip side, we also get games like Monster Hunter Apex, which seems to include just every single monster from the franchise, and also fan monsters. You know, I never thought I'd ever see Nako a gull again, but here we are. 
Now, it would be incredible, honestly, if we got a title like Generations Ultimate or Frontier that just had nearly every monster, but it was also like Frontier, so we would keep getting all these updates and every new monster would be added every six months. So I see the user's intention in making this. I get where their brain's at. And honestly, it's all hypothetical and for fun, so why not just add every single monster, even if it's a little bit ridiculous? Interestingly, uh, the fan and wiki also has their own distinctions for monster classes, and sometimes users will reclassify monsters if they believe they fit that are under a different classification. Uh, for example, Mizitsune and Paolumu are both filed under Fanged Beast for this Monster Hunter Apex game. Plesioth is considered a flying wyvern, Durambaros is in the same family as Aptonoth. It's interesting to see how this fan and wiki has its own community and thus its own headcanons. It's its own subgroup of the Monster Hunter community. Fan games like Monster Hunter Apex introduce new weapon types that the fan and community has been developing, including one called the Claymore, which is something in between Greatsword and Longsword. It's like Greatsword, Longsword, and Sword and Shield, but it's just like... like... like Guts... John Guts Berserk. There's also a weapon called the Whip Spear, which is a whip, but also a spear. There's a weapon that's called the Cestus, which... they're just gauntlets. The website also frequently mentions a pole arm weapon, which is kind of like the Insect Glaive, but without the insect. There's a weapon type called the Trap Shot, which I think is a slingshot that shoots traps. <laughs> In my personal opinion, it's difficult for me to envision a new weapon. The Claymore sounds interesting to me. I like that style of gameplay. It would be probably a weapon I would like to main. However, at the same time, I think that there is a certain aesthetic to the extreme exaggerations between all the different current weapon selections, and it makes all the different weapons very unique. It's difficult for me to word this, but I wouldn't exactly want a weapon that's in between two extremes, or like a simplified version of another weapon that's a little bit more out there. Like, I wouldn't want just an axe to replace the switch axe. <laughs> Perhaps this is why Medium Boga never returned after Try. I don't know. I mentioned before that Monster Hunter World was getting mods to expand the experience. Well, on this fanon wiki, a few users have visualized a hypothetical expansion of Monster Hunter World called Monster Hunter World Cataclysm. Astera has been destroyed by Dalamandur. Uh, the game plays out basically the same as Iceborne, though, except, again, Astera is destroyed. The characters set up a new base, and they complete new assignments, they hunt new monsters, and there's a siege fight similar to Zora Magdaros, but you're fighting Dalamadur instead. So it's an interesting concept, and I wonder if any of these ideas would eventually be made into an actual game if you have the team behind Crimson Fatalis and White Fatalis, you know, adding these monsters in. Maybe? I don't know how long it would take, but it's an idea. This wiki, though, it's... it's large. The pages never end, and you could really get lost just clicking random page. I haven't even gone into the countless fan monster designs. There really is a lesson to be learned here. In preparing one of these fan games, you have to prepare the same amount of data and development as Capcom would for a full title. And it's all just for fun, it's unpaid work. This is an extreme example of writing, planning, and development. Quest lists have to be balanced, quest descriptions must be written, equipment lists for every monster, every weapon type, equipment descriptions, upgrade trees, and it all has to be balanced. So it's no surprise that none of these fan games are 100% complete, they're all full of dead links. Yet you have to imagine that Capcom would normally employ a whole team to prepare this data, and those people have already probably been making this sort of data for Monster Hunter before, so to compare that to someone who's just, you know, who's just played the games and is writing it all by themselves, this is definitely not an easy task. It also doesn't help that the actual Monster Hunter games are a very visual experience, and as the old saying goes, a picture speaks a thousand words. A picture render of the ancient forest map tells you so much about the location without actually having to read anything. Another example, take a render of Diablos. If I, if you didn't know what Diablos was, and I asked you, how do you think this monster fights? How do you think this monster attacks you? And you'd probably say, oh, well, it has big horns. It probably attacks with its big horns. Many of the pages of the fan design monsters, they don't have any images. Sometimes they'll have a monster icon, and those look great. They, people have done a really, those artists have done a really, really great job designing these monster icons. But to me, it's not really enough to fully envision the monster. Thus, everyone's written these essays on these pages in order to describe the animal. They detail every attack, every turf war, 
personally, I wish these descriptions were collapsible or something because I'm just not seeing the monster. I'm seeing an immense amount of data and that it's great that you wrote all that data, that's impressive. I wonder if they could structure the pages to be like the Monster Hunter Wiki, where the ecology, carves, and equipment are all on separate pages. Furthermore, the rules on this wiki are, they're quite intimidating. I describe it like it's kind of like a cool kids club, where you must adhere to their rules about your fan fictions. To me, it seems restrictive. Like, you have to get to know the other members and you gotta hassle them for permission. Like, can I do this? Can I do that? How do I go about this? Before you actually start posting your ideas. I have to assume that they've likely dealt with randos just coming in and creating multiple fan games that were just completely incomplete, empty pages. When you have an idea, you kinda just wanna explode it out so that other people can see it, and I get that. It's just unfortunate that this has happened so many times, it's generated these restrictions on what should be a free platform for you to just post whatever fan fiction you want. It also seems like there may be drama within this community. I mean, there's drama in every community, but like, I just, I see it in the wiki and I'm like, ugh, ugh. So I'm on the fence about joining their Discord and, you know, joining their wiki and, and starting my own fan game pages. I, I don't know, like, I, a part of me kind of wants to do it. And I don't really even mind playing by the rules if that means peace and order and cohesion. So if any of you are watching and you're part of that community and you see uh, Pikmin Jake join in your fan and wiki Discord, that's just me and I'm just looking to partake in the Monster Hunter fan content. I, I have a really fun and solid idea for a game. It's a 50-50 chance I'll join. I'm still deciding if it's all worth my time and energy or if it's simply just a case of internet junk data just being junk internet data and it's just all just a waste of time. To come full circle here though, I did find my old Monster Hunter fan game I developed about 10 years ago. This is back when I was first getting into Monster Hunter, and this is just how my brain's always been. I had the exact same mentality. I was like, whoa, 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 whoa. What, what if I made my own Monster Hunter game? So I pulled out all my old notebooks, my art books, my quest list that I penciled out as a child. I even had to pull up old Facebook posts I made. I found it, my Monster Hunter game, and it is weird. Note, all of this was created before Monster Hunter 4 was even really announced. At the time, Freedom Unite and Portable 3rd were still considered peak Monster Hunter, which is no longer the case. So, my Monster Hunter game had some interesting features. Uh, for one, uh, there was no loading screens in the maps, so like Monster Hunter World and Rise. Truly, I was 10 years ahead of my time. But also, there was no vertical combat. Again, Monster Hunter 4 wasn't released. And also, there was no underwater combat. I guess maybe I didn't like underwater combat at the time, or I just felt the second gen basics were, again, peak Monster Hunter. Also, I have written that during character creation, you could choose your race? I don't know what this means. I think maybe you could choose being like a feline or wyvarian. I don't know. I also found that I wrote that apparently there was a breeding system that was introduced. And I don't know what the breeding system means, but I have a feeling that it's way more innocent than what it sounds like. There was an item called the shovel, which I think was like the pickaxe, but you used it to dig. The real kicker is, uh, the game only featured Monster Hunter Tri's weapon selection, which means that the bow, the gun lance, hunting horn, and dual blades were not in the game. I don't know why. It did feature medium bow gun, so I guess for those who like medium bow gun, that would have been in my game, apparently. So the game would basically be like the normal Monster Hunter game, There'd be an offline village, and this village was kind of like Moga Village, where it was a seaside fishing village, but it was also very Yukimo with aesthetics, so it was very Japanese with aesthetic. There was also an online town, so and that was something, it was kind of like Imagine Mine Guard, but it was also like Poke Village, so it's like a like a like an icy town, kind of like Seliana. There was a feline kitchen too, but the feline kitchen had a human chef. So I guess it wasn't a feline kitchen, it was a human kitchen. Like with every Monster Hunter game, there were, uh, obviously the hunting maps, and the hunting maps were some familiar locations. The deserted island was the starting map, uh, and the old jungle, old desert, and old swamp were the other maps you could also go to. Uh, they're still my favorites today, and it seems that I really liked them back then. The tower was also on there. One, another one of Jacob's favorites that he obsesses over. There was one new map, and it was a non-active volcano. 
So it would be a cold mountain map, like the Arctic Ridge, like the snowy mountains, but the interior was like magma filled, so it would be like the volcanic hollow on the inside. I don't know. There was also the Great Desert Sand Ship, you know, the one where you'd fight Jen Moran, but Jen Moran was not in my game. And speaking of that, I have to get into the monster list, because the monster list, I predicted some monsters. So, just going like really really fast, like the small monsters, like the herbivores, running running through the list, Apseros, Abdenoff, Rhinopolos, Popo, so it's like, you know, the basics. Uh, the sharks were in the game, but there was no underwater combat, so I don't know how you fought them. Uh, feline, me Melinx, as well as Shakalakas were in the game. There was a new spider monster that used thunder, and it was exactly like Rachnoid, but it used thunder. There was also a new beetle monster I came up with that was basically like the Conchu. It had a different shape, it was more like a stag beetle, but still, it, w it ended up just it, like it would roll around and it'd be like the Conchu. Of course, the game would also have the Pack Hunter monsters, so they had like Jaggy, Great Jaggy, Gemprey, Gendrome, Iaprey, Iadrome. There was a new one called the Devil Prey and the Devil Drome, like Devil Joe, but they were smaller? Devil Joe was also in the game, and other Brute Wyverns included Baroth, the Jade Baroth, and a new Brute Wyvern that I came up with that was exactly the same as Bon Baro. Leviathans were pretty familiar. I, of course, had Legiacris, Ignactor, and Golbol. Uh, no Royal Luteroth, but there was a Golbol subspecies that was orange. Getting into the assorted Wyverns, I came up with a new Wyvern that was similar to Rathalos and Raffian, where you would have the male and female be considered separate monsters, despite them being the same species. I do not have a name for these animals, but they were elementless minor wyverns. So think like Rathalos Raffian, but you took away their color and you took away their fire. There was also a silver-plated wyvern that was akin to Sregios, but it was silver. So Sregios, but silver. I had a monster that was like Giganox, but it wasn't Giganox. I had some pretty decent artwork created for it. So, but for this video, we're just going to call it Giganox. <laughs> I also had a Gigi equivalent. Also included was Nargakuga, a white subspecies of Nargakuga, which I think was from Frontier. Rathalos, Silver Rathalos, Rathian, Gold Rathian, Tigrix, Brute Tigrix, Berioth, Cephalos, Cephadrome, a green subspecies of Cephadrome, Diablos, Gravios, Acantor, and then a couple Frontier monsters, including Hypnocatrice, Paria, Perdu, I can't say their names, the, the, these ones. Zynogre was included, as well as Rajang, and also a Stygian Rajang? I didn't- for some reason I was like, no, Ra Zynogre doesn't get a subspecies, Rajang gets the Stygian subspecies. Uh, Shogun Senator and Shen Gaurian were the crabs that I included, and of course there was Elder Dragons, and they were kind of familiar. Cachella Diora, Camellios. There was a new water elder dragon that was essentially Namiel. Yamusukami was in it. Of course, Fatalis, Crimson Fatalis, White Fatalis, and Elatrion were in it, of course. Ruko Diora, which is from Frontier, was also included, as well as Amatsu and the Panther Dragon, which is an unused Monster Hunter concept art from the concept art books. So it's a pretty weird mix, but what's even weirder is the way that the game played out. So I have the quest list, and I'm just gonna read through how the quest flowed, because it was weird. So in f one star quest, the first large monster hunt, actually the first hunt that they throw at you is the Banbaro hunt. And then right after that is, of course, an urgent quest to fight the Great Jaggy. And I have to say, a Great Jaggy feels like a downgrade from Banbaro. A two star quest makes you fight those minor elementless wyverns I mentioned. But it also threw Iodrome, Golbol, and Baroth at you before immediately the next urgent is Nargakuga. Three star quests, this is where it gets really wacky, throws Giganox, Legiacris, and Tigrix, as well as Priya Peruya, before an urgent against Rathalos of all things. Which is odd, because I would think that Tigrix would not be a three star. Legiacris shouldn't even be a three star hunt. Four star quests then gives you Yamusukami immediately, then a Hypnocatrice, then Zynogre, um, and then Berioth, as well as a dual Bidukurogurosu. I didn't say that right. After that, the Elder Dragons are introduced, so you have to fight Kishela Diora, Camellios, Namiel, Kirin. Then the urgent was Cephadrome. Th this is the urgent for five star. You just took on Kishela Diora. 
Camellios, Namiel, Kirin, and now you're fighting Cephadrome. I don't know. I guess to me, Cephadrome was like the end all, final boss. Five star quests naturally have Rajang, Devil Joe, as well as a bunch of, you know, group monster quest combinations. And then there's an urgent quest to face a Cantor, followed by another urgent quest to fight White Fatalis. You don't, you don't fight regular Fatalis or Crimson, you fight White. From that point on, it's high rank. High rank starts with Shogun Senatar and Camellios right out the gate, as well as just like a typical golden fish delivery quest. There was also a combination quest to fight Raphalos and Cashella Diora. This is right out the gate in, in high rank. Seven star quest opens with the green Cephadrome subspecies alongside Brute Tigrex and White Nargakuga. So I have to assume that the green Cephadrome was on that same level. Also, it just threw the Crimson Fatalis at you alongside these monsters. <laughs> I don't know. The urgent was to fight Ruko Diora, followed by eight star quests, which they throw Gravios, Diablos, Ignactor, and Black Fatalis, the original Fatalis at you, uh, before the final boss being Amatsu, of all things. This quest list actually omits many of the other monsters from my list, so I assume that I must have added monsters later on and or they were just not included in the list, or the list was outdated, or they were for a G rank level, or I just never got around to writing that list. Look, there's nuggets of interesting concepts in there, but for the most part, this was, this was clearly a 13 year old's first swing at game development. Today, it's inspired me to reevaluate these ideas and, and reprocess them with my current understanding of Monster Hunter. That about does it though, this was a fun video, nothing crazy, no deep dives, just discussion. And I want to know though, uh, what kind of monster ideas would you, you watching, what would you include if you could develop your own monster hunter game? Let's have a discussion in the comments. And remember, no idea is too crazy. I, in my game, I buff Cephadrome to be equivalent to Rashing and Devil Joe. If any of you do decide to check out the Fanon wiki though, please do not harass them, do not vandalize their work. If you want to partake in their wiki, please join their Discord first and ask them questions before you begin. I know it's like a threshold you gotta get through and it's like, it feels like gatekeeping, but I'm sure that once you're in, they will assist you. The rules must be there for a reason, like it or not. Someday, I actually wanna try and cover the world of Monster Hunter fan fiction. Like, actual fan fiction, not just through these fan games. But that deserves its own video, and I haven't really dived into that yet. The only Monster Hunter fan fiction I've actually read is one by a guy in Japan, and it's all in Japanese, I have to translate it, uh, who did a crossover of Monster Hunter with, of course, Sailor Moon. So you know me, of course I'm gonna read it. Anyway, that's it. Thanks for watching. Have a wonderful day.